Okay, so this is going to be the ninth episode of my ray tracing series in Java. So I know in the last episode I said that I was going to start talking about object oriented design, start cleaning this up, but there's one more thing that I want to go over before I start doing that. So I want to talk about anti-aliasing. So um, the image we have now has no anti-aliasing, and what that means is that for each pixel, um, since we chose the center of the pixel, it is either a hit or miss. Now with anti-aliasing, what we actually want is an average. So what we're going to do is we're going to take each pixel. So imagine this pixel where the hand is, the cursor. And we're going to split that pixel up into rows and columns. Generally, you want uh, an n by n grid. And what we're going to do is we're going to sample those points. So basically, we sample a point for each pixel um, to find a ray that we want to cast out and see if it intersects the sphere. So instead, what we want to do is we want to sample multiple rays inside one pixel. And what this does is allows us <coughs> to average the color <coughs> over the entire grid instead of it just being either a hit or miss. <coughs> Sorry, I'm still recovering from being sick. So I'm going to talk about two kinds of sampling, uh, jittered sampling and then regular sampling. The one I use most is regular sam sampling, but jittered, jittered sampling actually has a lot of um, really important uses, and I'll go over those in a second. So. Let's see, what do we need here first? Okay, so what we need is two nested for loops, and I will call these row. And we'll make it an 8 by 8 grid. And then another for loop, and this will be column. So what this is saying is that for each x and y coordinate in our image, we are also going to have 64 um, smaller points inside that one pixel that we're sampling. So let's say we're doing 0, 0, so x, x and y, 0, so coordinate of 0, 0. We are going to take 8 coordinates in terms of the row inside that one coordinate as well as eight columns so this turns out to be a grid of 64 so what we want to do is now that we have our grid we want to create rays and sample each ray against the sphere to see if it intersects so what I want to do first is create a color and this is our starting color. We're going to assume that it's black. We'll change this uh, later on as we go. So, I want to create a ray. And we can do this I'll type it out and then, so we'll just you know what, let's make this easier. Just copy and paste and delete this. So this is our original ray we had. So we had the x minus the width divided by 2 plus 0.5. So instead of sampling the center of the pixel, we want to do sample each, in this case it would be each column since we're talking about the x, and then each row. So we can actually do this by taking, uh, this is column plus 0.5 and then divide it by the number of samples. So what this does is it takes, so let's say we're at the first column zero, so that would be zero divided by eight, but we want the center of that grid, so that would be 0 0.5 divided by eight, and then it would be 1.5 divided by eight, 2.5 divided by eight, and so on and so forth. So we can just do the same over here, 0 0.5 divided by eight. And this is called regular sampling. This is because we're taking the center of each box in the grid every time. 
so that's all we need for that. Now we can <coughs> copy this and we can place it inside here because what we want to do is for each of these we want to s check if this ray that we created intersects the sphere. If it does, we add that color to this temporary variable we have. Uh, actually, we want to make this that'll create it every time. We want to create a new color for each <coughs> pixel on our image. So let's redo the uh, if ray if sphere. Oops, it's gone. Got some like if sphere dot hit plug in array is not equal to 0, 0.0 color dot add um, sphere dot color so if the ray intersects the sphere we add that color in this case it would be red to this color objects that we created otherwise don't do anything. Uh, later on, we'll set a background color when we create our world class, and we would do like color dot add world dot background dot color. But in this case, since we chose our background to be black for now, we just won't do anything because we'd be adding 0 0.0, 0 0.0, 0 0.0. So I wouldn't do anything. So once we do this, we'll have. The final color and what we want to do is divide that color by the total number of samples so that we can get the average of that pixel um, and then once we do that we want to set the RGB for this pixel to be color dot two integer So we create a color, it's initially black, we loop through the rows and the columns, we create a new ray for each row and column, we check if that ray intersects the sphere, if it does add the color of the sphere, otherwise don't do anything, and then finally we divide by the total number of samples to get the average color, and then we set the buffer to that color. So what we could do is, let's render this. Might take some time because I chose eight. Okay. And now you can see we have an averaged value across some pixels. So right here where the hand is, you would have every single um, section in the grid would intersect the sphere and then out here you have less and less of the grid intersecting the sphere so the next one I want to talk about and we can make actually a very simple adjustment here just go up here and do random random equals new random import this so this was regular sampling that I talked about, and regular sampling takes the center of each row and column. However, jittered sampling takes a random value inside of each. Uh, what's going on here? Oh, takes a random value inside of each um, subsection of the grid. So instead of taking 0.5, this could be 0 0.1, 0 0.8, 0 0.7. And what this does is it actually creates more noise. Uh, I don't know if you guys know what noise is, but noise is um, random color value that gets interpreted by the eye. And the eye can actually handle a large amount of noise. But the point of this is because of the fact that the eye can handle, and the brain, or specifically can handle a large amount of noise, 
we could actually decrease these values to allow for faster rendering times and get a similar result which is important so I'll just render this you probably won't be able to see a difference because I chose a high sample value but I generally use regular sampling just because in my eyes it's the purest you take the center of each pixel um, we will probably optimize this more with um, can't remember the name of it uh, and rooks and multi jittered sampling as well as the combination of multi jittered and n rooks I can't remember the name it starts on H but that is the one you want for um, reflections refractions etc but for now this is good enough so I'll change it later so you can see our image it's basically the same you'll see it's not a smooth pattern as the last one was this one was increasingly red to black this one has some um, jittering to it I guess hence the name but that is the basics of anti-aliasing so I guess in the next episode this will probably be uh, maybe like a 30 minute long episode or an hour long episode I will be doing my normal dev stuff I guess I'll probably be talking a little bit less and explaining things but I'd like to clean up this code with some object oriented design as well as add some functionality such as the world class the view plane and maybe uh, projection maybe I'll do perspective projection as well but uh, we'll see so that's it thanks for watching